back to the big picture. We're talking about the political divide in our country after the events of this past week. And Vic, we see that the runoff election in Georgia has put two Democrats into a Congress. What, do you, what does this mean for checks and balances having well, Congress? Well, what, what it means, obviously, is, is that the Democrats control um, both houses of Congress and they control the White House. Um, and, and so they are in complete control of the, uh, um, the governing apparatus in, in Washington, D.C. Now, you know, the majority in the Senate is, 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 is very tenuous. It's, it's actually a 50-50 split. So anytime there is a vote um, that uh, requires a tiebreaker, um, the Vice President of the United States would have to preside over that session of the Senate and vote. Um, so uh, it, it, it's not a, not a clear majority, but uh, it, it makes um, Senator Chuck Schumer the majority leader. Um, there are inherent advantages to um, having the majority leader uh, be from your party. The majority leader sets the Senate calendar um, and drives what legislation actually ma makes it to the floor for a vote. So that's significant, even though it's a 50-50 tie. Um, the, the fact that uh, Senator Schumer is, is now the majority leader um, inures all of those uh, benefits to, to the Democrats. And, you know, from, the, from President-elect Biden's perspective, it's the best case scenario, right? Um, he uh, uh, has the ability now to um, pursue his, his legislative agenda, uh, his governing agenda, um, without having to um, uh, compromise or negotiate with the other side. Although um, I think, and this is my, only my expectation based on what I know of the president-elect, um, I, I think he, he's going to seek policies where he can get broader agreement, particularly because the, the Democrat majorities are, are so small. Um, you know, the Republicans picked up 11 seats, actually 12 seats in, in the House. Um, one of the incoming uh, Republican uh, House members that passed away uh, recently from COVID. Uh, so it's, you know, so it's down to an, a, a net gain of 11. But the majority for the Democrats in the House is very slim. Um, and as I said in the Senate, it's actually a 50-50 tie um, with the vice president being able to uh, uh, cast the deciding vote. So, um, but it certainly is good news for the, uh, for the president-elect and his um, ability to uh, pursue his agenda. How responsible do you think Trump was for what the outcome in Georgia, which was up until now, uh, pretty much a red state, then purple, and now this happened. You think Trump is responsible? Well, uh, not in the sense that you might think, because the, 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 the early voting in the Georgia Senate special began on December 14th. So it, in, a, in a sense, was only a one-month campaign. By, by the time it was determined that there would be a runoff, um, the, you know, you were already into the second week in November. So in a sense, it was only a four week campaign. And so all the money that was raised, most of the money that was raised in those campaigns was put to use and get out the vote, um, apparatus or get out the vote programs. Um, and once again, you know, the Democrats did a better job of getting their vote out, um, than the Republicans did. Uh, the, the Democrats had a decided advantage in early uh, voting and, and mail-in ballot voting, just as they did in the presidential election. And so the Republicans needed a higher turnout on election day, uh, and they didn't get the turnout to where they needed, to, needed it to be on election day uh, to win those seats. Now, having said that, you know, those were record turnouts. 4.4 million people voted in that Senate uh, runoff in Georgia. Uh, and the margin of victory um, was less than 50,000 votes. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it was a very close election. It turned out to be, in my opinion, a turnout election, not necessarily um, an election about ideas or, or issues or policies. And you were coming off of a presidential election where everybody knew what the issues were anyway. Um, so it really did boil down to turnout. Really, that's kind of the same thing as the, as the national election. You can really say the same thing about the election before Georgia, 
the, the presidential election. It was right. pretty and much the I, same. I, and as, I, as, as I've said many times on this show um, leading up to the, to the election, I thought it was a big strategic mistake by the president um, to convince his supporters that mail-in voting um, was inherently corrupt. Uh, because um, uh, his voters did not take advantage of that. His supporters did not take advantage of that. And as we talked about, there's all kinds of things that can come up in your life on election day that could prevent you from getting to the polls. Um, and it's very easy for you to sit at your kitchen table when that ballot arrives and mark it and put a stamp on it and put it in the, put it in the mail and it's done. Um, and I think that uh, not only cost uh, uh, the president um, re-election, but it cost the Republicans control of the Senate. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about the uh, international reaction. What do you think, or, ha or do you think, what happened in the Capitol this uh, past week is going to affect our, the, how other nations view us or relationship with other countries? I'm, I'm not sure it's going to affect our relationship with our allies. What I worry about is how our adversaries do this and whether or not they see a weakness that's to be exploited. Um, and I hope and pray um, that that's not the case. Uh, but I, I have to believe that our country is a little bit more vulnerable tonight um, as a result of, of, of what happened at the Capitol. Um, it certainly um, uh, would give... Um, a confidence uh, to our adversaries, and, and that can't be a good thing. No, obviously not. What do you think, uh, you mentioned that Biden is going to be able to get a lot of policy uh, through because he has uh, all of this power now. What do you think is going to be a top priority of the Democrats uh, now that they have all the power of the well, Democratic in, 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 in the short term, um, President-elect Biden is talked about his his number one priority is 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 the COVID pandemic and and making sure that um, the distribution of the vaccine is done as as quickly and as effectively as possible so that we can get um, our economy uh, back up and running again. And then I think his, his second most important priority, again it's COVID related, is um, another round of stimulus. Um, another CARES Act, if you will, um, that not only um, helps to stimulate a, uh, a regeneration of the economy, but also to help state and local governments uh, become financially whole uh, from the, uh, the, the cost that they've um, had to incur because of the COVID pandemic. So I see that as, as, as his, his top priorities. Um, and, and then, um, you know, like every other administration, he'll settle in um, and, uh, and, and hopefully once we get beyond the pandemic, uh, you know, then he'll, he'll begin to uh, um, determine what his priorities are going forward. But I would expect that those would be the top two issues for him. Well, the question now is how, if at all, does the Republican Party ever come back? What path well, do they follow? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a difficult question to answer right now. Um, historically, the party out of power in the White House typically picks up anywhere from 10 to 20 seats in the House midterm elections. Uh, and that would be enough for the Republicans to take back control of the House of Representatives in two years. Um, and so that would have been a likely scenario. Now, with what's happened at the, at the Capitol, um, that road to uh, taking back control of the House is going to be that much more difficult. It's really going to depend on how um, strong and effective the leadership of the Republican Party is in distancing itself um, from really the unconscionable actions of, of, a, of, of a very radical few um, at the Capitol this week. Well, are they going, I guess the que big question is, are they going to find a leader uh, for the party, somebody that everyone can get behind like they did Trump? Is there anybody in the wings, so to speak? Well, that's always difficult when you don't have the White House uh, because leadership is more dispersed. Um, so it, it, it starts with the head of the uh, Republican National Committee. Um, I know that um, the person that sits in that chair today is, is a uh, Trump person, 
that's typically the what happens the president picks the chair of of his or her national party um so i don't know what to expect from from her um but it's it you know it's gonna you have a majority of governors in this country that are republican um you have a, re, right. a majority of of state houses in this country that are republican i think the leadership is going to have to come from the state level people forget that well, you know what? There's a lot to talk about. And can you say something optimistic? Are we ever going to recover from what happened before we um, close? I, I believe yes. And the okay. reason I believe that is because inherently, I always have confidence and faith in the American people. And we have a system of government in this country, our democratic Republican system of government that has survived crisis after crisis for, for over 200 years. And I expect it nothing less will occur this time. And we're still here, as the song goes. So Vic Martucci, our political analyst from Mazziello, Martucci and Associates, thank you for joining us. And Thanks thank you, him. and thank you for all your contributions to us. Let's work together to heal, not only with the pandemic, but also as a nation. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Thanks for watching The Big Picture, and thanks for watching WBBZ TV.